Well, folks, the contest ends next Wednesday, and so far, I only got one entry for it. I need more. So just as long as you don't make fun of me or anything, I will try my best to make this video. Because for five years now, I always get bombarded by hatred. And speaking of hatred, these two villains are the ones I'm going to be talking about. So wake up and smell the coffee, because I'm about to talk to you guys about Thanos and Darkseid. Two evil villains with a sense of chaos and destruction. I'm Daniel Paul Moore, and I'm coming your way to tell you all why I wanted a death battle. Born to the Eternals' mentor and Sui-san, Thanos was subject to the Deviant Gene at birth. As a result, Thanos became like that of a mutant of Titan, the sixth orbiting moon of Saturn, where he developed a purple hide-like skin along with strength and other physical abilities far surpassing that of other Titans. This mutation also augmented the powers that he inherently possessed as a descendant of the Eternals. Growing to become most powerful Titan, his skin would develop in fashion which allowed the Titan to not only absorb cosmic energy at an atomic level, but then manipulate it into kinetic force by conscious choice. Though never shunned by his family as a youth, Thanos was feared and shunned by his Titan's, fellow Titans' peers as a result of his unique qualities. His brother Eros was groomed from their childhood to eventually replace their father in the role of what constituted a leader among their people. Eros would throughout their youth be surrounded by loving friends and family who much favored him over Thanos. Feeling the sting of much ostracism, Thanos would find solace and purpose in their other venues. The one fateful day in an all-forgotten subterranean temple, an enterprising young Thanos would find companionship in the form of Mistress Death. Decades would pass and their relationship grew and eventually blossomed into a dark and forbidden romance. Under Death's tutelage, he grew even stronger and more powerful, well-versed in the black arts which had long been forbidden on Titan. She taught him knowledge is power, and that power is everything. With these revelations and maturity, rebellion against his father the mentor, and even Thanos' own ensuing exile were not far away. When his father discovered Thanos conducting forbidden experiments, he expelled Thanos from Titan, though with not without a heavy heart. But fueled by his hatred for the slight, Thanos would amass even more knowledge, skill and power via mysticism, meditation, and bionics during his century-long isolation. Having surpassed all the other Eternals in power and strength, Thanos decided to return to Titan and to display his newfound might. Yet Thanos would not come home with the intentions his father had hoped for, resulting from his punishment. Instead of atonement, Thanos attacked the planet with nuclear weaponry while orbiting Titan. However, Thanos had miscalculated Titan's defenses in his haste to sate his anger. This allowed some to escape the onslaught. However, only a handful of what was thousands survived the horror and his chance would have it neither Thanos' brother nor father were on Titan during the assault. To Thanos' regret, his mother was not so fortunate as she was the one member of his family he might have spared. In the aftermath, Thanos left the remains of Titan and returned to space. Proving his devotion and worth to death was all that mattered to the Titan, with his home now crushed in his wake. During this time, the cosmos Thanos conquered and pillaged many worlds, acquiring vast resources, such as an assortment of followers, technology, weapons, and spacecraft. At this point, Kronos, the father of Mentor, Alars, and the Earth-based Eternals, all father Zura, sought to act out of a sense of obligation for what Thanos had wrought and might yet further cause. Mentor pleaded with this cause to Kronos that they might prevent future tragedy. To that end, Kronos created Drax the Destroyer to ward away the ill which Kronos knew to be the future for the Mad Titan. Drax was formed as an avatar for the Eternal built out to the very cosmic power which made up the living Eternal. Into Drax, Kronos would imbue the singular mission of seeking out Thanos to stop his designs. 
Drax would become the cosmic force to act as a foil to Thanos. Setting out upon his task, Drax would meet the Mad Titan on a living planet distant from our own star system. The two mighty beings met in an incredibly violent physical confrontation. The clash rendered the landscape asunder, and the planet was destroyed, with the two combatants alone to drift within the debris. However, the planetary explosion would render Drax incapacitated, allowing the still-conscious Thanos to easily capture the Destroyer. After having dispatched Drax in such a fashion, Thanos set about further plans for stepping stones in his growing empire. Taking an interest in Earth, Thanos sent his henchmen, the Blood Brothers, to survey and deal with the potential obstacle to his ambitions, one of which would become Iron Man. At this time, in the cosmic prison Thanos left him, Drax awoke to the coming danger of Thanos' plans. He would then reach out telepathically, warning Iron Man of the danger nearing his planet and of the history the Titan had for violence. Yet the message was too late as the brothers apprehended Tony before receiving the distress call of Drax. The brothers would return Tony to Thanos' staging grounds. During this time, Tony drew upon an escape plan and ambushed the brothers in an unsuspecting moment. Though able to catch the brothers off guard, Thanos became aware of the scuffle and stepped in. Thanos would crush the metal gloves around Tony's hands under his heel while Tony lay prone from a singular titan blow. However, Mentor had been monitoring events from Titan and fired an unknown energy that reached the Titan, simultaneously having m ma wait a second, Tony and setting Drax free. Thanos wasted no time deploying the brothers as a distraction while he set the self-destruct sequence and made his escape. After a fierce battle against the armored hordes of Thanos, the heroes then attacked the Titan himself. Yet to the heroes' dismay, they in fact attacked a robot lookalike, left to keep them occupied until the ensuing explosion which would allow for the Titan's fall to retreat. Recognizing the danger, Mentor was able to ward the heroes away before the explosion reached critical mass. In the aftermath, Thanos' fortress was destroyed, but his whereabouts were unknown. True to his beginnings, Thanos ever seeks out the mysteries to power for personal use or as a ward from enemies seeking retribution. Yet even the quest for power is dwarfed by endeavors or errant missions for Mistress Death in an attempt to curry her favor. Always Thanos seeks power, but is forever wed to his quest to be found worthy as Death's cohort. He has succeeded on multiple occasions, but has been consistently defeated. Most often, though, as in the case of the Cosmic Cube, the Infinity Gauntlet, and lastly, in the story told in Marvel The End, it is a result of a deep psychological construct. In critical moments during these events, Thanos provides a window to his enemies and to his subconscious, which belies the belief that he does not deserve or even want the power he seeks. This has been most often presented by the personification of his foil, Adam Warlock, who maintains a prescient link to Thanos through their extended contact within the Soul Gem. When the old gods fell in Ragnarok, the new gods filled the void. But this was a cycle, and the power methodology and ultimate fate of the new old gods remained within the new gods. All that is dark sides has been taken by him through blood and force. It is unsure how Euxus evolved into the embodiment of evil that he is now, but it is known that the two key events propelled him on his path. First, Uxus killed his mother, Hegra, to wrest control of Apocalypse from her after Yuga Khan, his father, was trapped on the source wall in his attempt to unlock the secret of the source. Then, Desad betrayed Drax, Euxus' brother, as he was trying to master the Omega Effect. Euxus then killed his brother, rightful heir to the Omega Effect, with power, a following, and a drive. To accomplish his goals without regret or remorse, Euxus took up his god name, Darkseid, Superman's enemy.
At one point, and for the only time in his life, Darkseid fell in love. He took as his wife a woman named Sully, a scientist who believed in using power not for conquering, but for the common good. Queen Hegra, terrified that Sully might corrupt her son, had Desaad assassinate her, but not before she bore Darkseid a son named Calabac. Upon Sully's death, Darkseid had Desaad poison his mother as revenge, then eternally turn his back on the concept of love. So there you have it, folks. Two villains from two different universes would make one great death battle to see. So, if you don't believe in all of the stuff I said, then look it up on the Marvel and DC Wikia sites. That's what I would do. And besides, if you want to have voice actors instead of voice clips in this death battle, as well as 3D animation, then you know something? It takes a lot of determination to wait for this to happen. Trust me, I know what evil is. The losing side. No one wants to join that side. Evil is wrong, unhygienic, and it makes people have no friends. That said, I'm going to end this video right now. Don't forget to fave, comment, share, like, and subscribe. Help keep this account safe from evil internet haters, internet trolls, cyber bullies, rude people, and dislikers. And as always, thanks for watching.